welcome back to my South by Southwest coverage. Um, I am here with Farhad, the director of Everything Will Be All Right, which is screening in, let me make sure I get this right, shorts program number three. It has a screening as of recording tomorrow at 3.30 uh, p.m. Um, at Alamo Lamar E. Um, and I think it, it's also screening online, so you can catch it anytime until the 21st is what South by Southwest is telling me on their schedule website. Um, but Farhad, thanks for coming on. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, no problem. Uh, I know it's been an arduous uh, path to get here. I, I was sick and then oh. I was still sick. And then, oh, uh, sorry. And then I forgot and I was like, oh, <laughs> no. Um, like, are, how are you doing now? I'm, I'm doing good. much better. I don't okay. sound like um, yeah. I don't sound like I'm just dying. Like my voice is naturally high, like this. Uh huh. Like take it twenty octaves lower, and that's what my voice does all the time. Um, yeah. it, it was nice because it was like I could pretend like I had a big uh -huh. growing voice. But, <laughs> um, but other than that, it, it was just Kleenex after Kleenex. Um, yeah, that part wasn't fun. Yes, yeah, so it should get some. Is it related to COVID or something? No, no. Um, I thought originally, um, it was oh. an allergy, um, because I get seasonal allergies. Yeah, um, but then yeah. I was like, okay, it's day two or three, because I was sick for like four days. Mm. Um, and I was like, okay, it's day two or three. Maybe it's not allergies. Yeah. I, I don't think allergies do this to me, but yeah. Um, I think it was just cold or something. Maybe I caught something. Probably, yeah, probably. Um, because I did have COVID at one point. Oh. Um, um, and that was awful. Oh, yeah. That was, that was like, like which variant? Like Omicron or? I don't know. Um, because. Here was the thing. I was feeling so bad, like I couldn't get up for anything, so I didn't go and get tested. So mm, I don't yeah, know. yeah, I see. Yeah, I, I was see. like, okay, if I'm sick, yeah. I don't want to make anyone else sick, so I'm just gonna yeah. stay home. And, yeah. know. and thankfully, I, I could do that because I, I do this from home. Um, yeah. Uh, just meant I can go to the office um yeah and, and do the professional setup i just have to set, set my laptop up um and watch movies yeah. all day which isn't so bad yeah. um but mm -hmm. yeah um it, it the worst part of it was um i love coffee so it's like one of yeah me too things. yeah <laughs> yeah like it's one of my favorite drinks i've got like custom coffee set up i've got a conical burr grinder i've got um, an AeroPress, the the works. Mm. You know, I, I don't have like a thousand dollar espresso mm. set up or anything like this. Fancy like fancy play. machine, yeah. No, I don't have an espresso or anything like that. Um, yeah. But um, but no, I I can taste it, so I was like, oh yeah. No. Um, but um, speaking of uh. Get, uh, sickness. Your, your film deals with um, a daughter who gets a call. She's in Montreal, I believe, mm -hmm. and she gets a call that her father is sick with COVID. Mm -hmm. And so, what was it like um, trying to film a story surrounding COVID while we're still very much dealing with COVID? Yeah. So, well, you know, it's all started like exactly the beginning of the pandemic you know march 2020 mm -hmm. so basically i did the original idea and, and you know the outline was conceived the exact time that we shot it but one year later so you know i wrote the first outline like march 2020 and you know i spent the whole year you know drafting and you know uh, uh applying you, you know for grants everything and then pre-production and exactly one year later we shot uh in the exact time frame that the pandemic you know started like in 2020 so but 
back to your question, uh, you know, it was like, it was my response to the situation I was in because, you know, it was like kind of, you know, unclear what's going to happen. And, and, I, and I was isolated, you know, uh, in my place and thinking like in this new world and this new reality. And then and really, you know, because I'm originally, uh, and obviously I have a lot of friends that they're living like in uh, Quebec and across Canada, elsewhere, and they're like first generation immigrants and, and diaspora. And they have like families, relatives, friends, and, you know, uh, attachments elsewhere in this world, in my case, in Iran. And I, I my observation was like, there, there were more like, many complications you know out of our control you know for example you know friends of mine they, they lost you know loved ones back back home in iran so basically this story is based on the reality i experienced they lost loved ones in iran and there were like travel restrictions and and beyond that e even if they could travel to iran they couldn't you know uh and the ceremony or something because of you know social distancing and the situation was like beyond imagination you know it's like my film it was like you wake up one morning and the world is different you know and there is a new reality that you had no idea someday you would have to face that you know so basically in that context so i was thinking what my project would be like and i thought well th this should be the response to the situation however i was mindful that well i didn't want to make like a covid film exclusively because i knew that it could be too much because covid thing is already too much for everyone so if if you if you brand brand your film like it's a covid film it's it's not gonna help you know so so i was i was mindful to to you know to weave a story that could take place in any similar situation, let's say, you know? So if you if you take out COVID thing from the story, you can replace it with something, you know, different, but the story holds, you know, as is. So basically, yeah, it was my response for the, uh, for the situation I was in, in isolation. I started, you know, writing the story and, you know, drafting, drafting, and yeah, one year later, we shot it. And one year later, like 2022, here we are. World premiere. Yeah, which is nuts, by the way. I, I, it, I always think that people don't understand how long it takes to make a film. Even, yeah. I mean, even if you just make a, I, I don't know, just for example, a six minute short film, you've got to write out the script, you've got to cast the characters, you've got, or if you're not a docu short that is and then you've got to do all this work in pre-production and also post-production that yeah if any one thing one one thing hitches yeah it, it could be another i don't know six months in post production yeah. or something like that and 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 add to that you know the process of funding yeah which, which is you know totally unclear when <laughs> you can have access to, to to you know enough funding to make it you know yeah. it can be like years in my case I, I think i was lucky you know because i i submitted to count the council and it was you know uh, accepted the first submission so but you know in different scenarios it it, it can take long time and and you know I, for short films especially for short films, i would say well if it takes a couple of years or years for short film it's too too long because we, usually we think of something which is relevant today mm -hmm. if it's gonna if, if it's gonna be made like five years from now I, I don't know if it's relevant you know so it's better be made within one or two years well and, and that's the thing because like <clears throat> I, I love your answer about not trying to be a covid story yeah yeah um because there have been some things that have taken place that um, hmm, 
were a COVID story that just didn't hit for me. Like uh, the upcoming, I guess, upcoming now yeah. would, would be seven days, which is uh, coming out at the end of the month uh, mm-hmm. via Synodyme. And I was just like, mm. no more. No yeah, more. I understand. Yeah. Um, and in the same breath, which I get everyone loves, just couldn't couldn't get through it at Sundance 2021. I just, I'm well documented on that point, but like, it's just like, hey, three or four docs and I'm good. <laughs> yeah. But, <clears throat> excuse me, still, mm-hmm. so, still some of the um, um, sickness trying to break through. That's fine, yeah. That's um, fine. Um, but yeah. Um, yeah. So where, where, how did you find Hmm. Your lead. How did how did that work? Yeah, the lead the lead actor, right? Yeah, uh, Naima, I believe. Uh, yeah, Naima. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, basically, well, for me, she was the obvious, you know, candidate. Uh, I think because well, I had seen Antigone, the film she she, she was in, and you know, it was like a hit in Canada. And, I, and and she won a screen awards for lead uh, performance for that film. And well, yeah, because of that film, the, you know, Antigone was like kind of, you know, an interpretation of, you know, a classical tragedy in a new way, kind of, you know, it was basically not tragedy in the literal classical sense, but it's like modernized rendition. And for this film, I was thinking something similar because I was, you know, in general, I, I, I usually avoid melodrama. And in order to avoid melodrama, not, not that I'm against that, it's, it's not just something I'm interested, you know, in. Yeah. So to avoid that, I usually think of, you know, the ways in which I can just distance myself from melodrama, especially in situations that there are like good reasons to be melodramatic, like this film. So I was thinking like more like a tragic hero in a situation that will, uh, she's affected by, 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 by a situation out of her control and she's asking why this happened, you know? Why me? Why this happened? It, it, it was, everything was normal, like yesterday and today I, I have to deal with this and that. And it's like, you know, so I, I, I could find like resemblances between, you know, the two interpretation of like a, a, a tragic hero in Antigone and my film. And also, you know, it's, it's my film, like Antigone again, it's totally based on the, 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 the power of performance because you know almost the, throughout the film almost like we are with her you know yeah. not that not not we are with her with, with the lead character and and most of the film is shot like in close shots so we are with her throughout the journey so i would say that well the the lead actor is you know carrying the weight of the film and the drama and and i saw that in antigone and i knew that well she was perfectly capable of that so she was the first one i approached and you know and she could relate to the story and character and everything went smoothly from there yeah and it's interesting you talk about the cinematography being very up close because that's one thing that i think is a little becoming not a lost language but um Mm -hmm. but becoming a a thing that people just kind of ignore is the magic of cinematography but yeah i was seeing somebody debate uh a dolly zoom in spider-man um no way home Um, Mm -hmm. no spoilers here um Mm -hmm. but um they they were comparing it to jaws and it's like okay this is a fake dolly zoom. Here's a real dolly zoom. Here's mm-hmm. that change of the face and all of this stuff. And I think one, it's already an achievement to get in, in that close space and in, in areas where people are like, hey, maybe you don't get so close. You know, yeah. where, where we were putting up, I think 
field that at one point, um, I don't know what it was like in uh, Montreal, but um, mm -hmm. but but I mean, I I just think the narrative of closeness is an interesting mm -hmm. uh, note to pick on because it's it's not something you would think um, to do. Um, but yeah. I mean, you, you talk about the performance so I uh, so focused on her figuratively and literally. Yeah. Um, so, 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 yeah, I mean, um, what, what did you have to learn in that aspect of being close but far away at the same time in, in yeah. the shooting? Yeah, you mean because of the situation of like distancing? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, yeah back to the question of you know closeness yeah that's well you know as you mentioned i wanted to be in like the bubble of the character you know that close because we i wanted the, the audience to read like kind of you know her mind mm -hmm. and even though it's it's vague but try to read her mind why why is she reacting like that why is why isn't she just you know a uh, uh, booking of flight and everything you know and i i wanted to play with that you know a uh, uh, notion of you know vagueness but trying to understand you know you know and for for how we performed the, the closeness while we were like in distance well uh, that was well it, it's artificial world you know because well we were like watching on monitor so <laughs> we were that close to the cinematic image but yeah far from the uh physical performance so it's kind of you know uh strange you know because well you want to see the performance you know in reality in, in physical reality but you're far and you want to just be in the position of the viewer, your future viewer, and 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 watch it like. It is, and this is something I don't usually like. You know, I, I'm not a kind of a director to to you know stick to the monitor. I, I'm really more like you know interested in watching the scene. You know, in in its reality, and 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 I'm sure that will the, the nuances of you know you know a refrain and everything is taken care of by the. DP, but in this case, yeah, there was like social distancing in place, and we were like kind of far from the, uh, and we were using like telephoto lens, so we were like kind of, kind of far from the physical, you know, scene. And yeah, I was monitoring on the screen, but well, it, it went smoothly. And it, well, everything went smoothly. I would say, probably because we we had good conversations beforehand with you know performance with dp with everyone so we were all in the same boat i would say so and we shared the same vision so on on set regardless of covid yeah everything went smoothly yeah i, I was very happy with the with the shooting yeah yeah and i want to pick i want to pick on something you said yeah you talk about not wanting to um, be so close to the monitor, watch it. it, it was there, was there, is there any reason for that? Is there more interpreting to be done through the monitor versus just, I don't know, looking over there and being like, okay, that's what she's actually doing? Yeah, well, I would say yeah. For me, yes, because well, you know, w w when I watched it, the, the actual performance and the actual you know set, as opposed to you know what is framed in the monitor. So it's all it's always like you know exploring options, you know, because it's it's boundless. Yes. Yeah. You know, you, you you can always think of new ways of doing it you know as opposed to something when it's framed for me it's like it's it's the final you know output so i'm kind of you know so that's that's what we have and that's what it should be but when i look at the actual scene it, it, 
nothing is de determined, you know. The, the, the options are open to explore. Yeah, for me, it's, it's like that. I know that, well, there are different approaches in directing, but, well, yeah, I really like to, you know, uh, well, maybe it's good to mention that I started, like, filmmaking on, like, 60 millimeter. And by those, like, you know, very old 60 millimeter cameras, like Bolex, I didn't have a monitor to look into. Maybe that's, that. it begins like that, you know? Maybe. And, you know, I was talking with... Uh the director of Jazz Fest, a New Orleans story, uh, about this time yesterday, mm -hmm. um, well, a little later. Um, but um, he, he was talking about um, 16 millimeter footage too. I think that he maybe even um, shot some of the film on 16 millimeter as well as IMAX and a bunch of things like that. And he's talking about the visual experience of it. It's a fascinating fascinating yeah. um uh, yeah, sure. to broach how uh, just the type of camera changes um because exactly even the cameras we're using right now are totally different because it's like okay mine's just like pointed up but it's like okay well what happens when if i like try and put a webcam over on my monitor then it's looking down so that creates a new shift yeah, I, I could probably talk for hours about how things change the way you use exactly um, before you use, especially with um, bigger uh, frame uh, formats like IMAX, um, because then you have to like w when it goes home to the home release, you have to be like, OK, let's take all of that out because we can't put an IMAX disc out. Mm -hmm. Put the old black bars. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, yeah. Not unlike this, um, but um, yeah, exactly. But, um, but uh, yeah, um, it, that's. It, I I hope people check out your film, um, your short film. Um, it's like I said earlier. It's screening at South by Southwest um, tomorrow and online for the rest of the week um and i'm sure it'll be um somewhere else somewhere in the nebulous future um because i mean with 300 plus stuff i'm i i i see stuff get acquired every day um so even if it's just a vimeo link um it's it, it'll it'll be great for people to see um exactly. short yeah. Um, but, uh, Farhad, thank you so much for joining me. Um, thank you for having me. And, uh, and, and yeah, I, I hope my, uh, questions weren't too va vague and non uh, That was specific. perfect. Yeah, that was perfect. Yeah. I like that. I enjoyed the conversation actually. Yeah.